Hello, I'm John Shenholzer, and I'm live from the McShen Foundation, Virginia's leading authentic full-service recovery community organization right here in Richmond, Virginia. And I'm going to bring to you another little chalk talks on some of the things that's wrong with our system and what can be approved. Now, in Virginia, for example, these little exits right here are going to stand for 100,000 Virginians that need help from Southern Houston disorders. And we got roughly 700,000, let's see, I got one too many. We only got about 700,000 people in Virginia that need help from Southern Houston disorders. And the good news is the recovering people know exactly how to help these folks. Now I want to um, try to get you to understand a little something here. These 700,000 people right here and you can go to uh, like the Virginia Association of Community Service Board. You can go to the 2008 JLOC report done by the General Assembly. You can go to the uh, Department of Behavioral Health and Developmental Services. You can go to SAMHSA. But when you add up the folks with alcohol problems, benzo problems, prescription problems, heroin pot problems, we got about 700,000 Virginians meet the clinical criteria for needing substance use disorder treatment. Now, here's the interesting part. This is the part you're going to like. You take the bottom 100,000, those are the 100,000 Virginians that are ending up in our criminal justice system. Now, here's one thing I'm trying to point out. The worst of this bunch, the ones who make up over 50% of our arrests in Virginia are going to be opiate, desperately seeking opiate addicts, meaning these are guys that are strung out on prescription medication, they got in their heroin because it was cheaper, or whatever. These are the ones that are down inside your Walmarts and your Targets and your Home Depots and your Lowe's stealing from $300 to $1,000 a day, and it's just a matter of time before they get arrested and end up in the criminal justice system. Now, in Virginia, to arrest somebody, just, just to arrest them, get them to the jail, keep them two, three, four days. We're spending over $5,000 per arrest. And now, keep in mind that bottom percent, that's your frequent flyer. These are the ones that come back over and over and over. The rest of these 600,000 people that need help, they're full-time employed, they're holding it together. You know, some of them got money, they can go away to rehab. Some have insurance, but they're not at the level of the need. Now, most of these folks right here, over half of these people, if they could get opiate detox, a five-day buprenorphine step-down detox from opiate, they would get it. Now, over here, the McShen Foundation, partnering with Clean Life Medical, can provide opiate detox, five-day opiate detox for $350. So our Politicians, basically our board of supervisors, I mean, I'm talking all 120 jurisdictions in Virginia, they making a conscious decision to spend $5,000 per consumer instead of $350. Now, if I was a taxpayer, I'd be pretty upset about that. I am a taxpayer, I am upset. So we need to have a system of care that this bottom percent, this 100,000 desperately seeking whether it be opiates or alcohol or pot or whatever, if they knew they could walk in to a provider and get appropriate help right away, not told to come back in 21 days, we could eliminate over 50% of this. Now, as a frequent flyer, would you rather spend $350 a pop or $5,000 a pop? And some of you are wondering, well, why would they do that? Why would our policymakers make a conscious decision to spend that much money when they could spend this? That's a very good question. I'm gonna answer that question. Y'all got this, right? So here we go. I'm gonna talk about America for a minute. Corporate America. America is a type of country that has corporations. And that corporation has board members. And these board members are elected by stockholders. These stockholders elect these board members, they pay them good money, by the way, to make decisions that make the company money. 
So the stockholders can make money. It's real simple, real simple stuff. It's been going on for years. Now, if these board members took bribes, let's get over on this side here for a minute. If they took kickbacks, these board members, let's say they were taking money on the side, okay? They were diverting profits from the stockholders, okay? Even though they're getting paid good money to make good decisions, they're greedy, but they're getting, they're getting money over here. They conspire to defraud the corporation. Well, in corporate America, when these board members get caught defrauding the board and the stockholders, they get arrested. They get brought up on conspiracy charges, wire fraud, all kinds of crime. They go to white collar jails probably. And they get fired and never get to work on that again. You got that picture, right? Well, over here, we have board of supervisors, city councils, and they got supervisors and council members that get elected by the people. And they're supposed to see the people elect these folks. And they're supposed to make good decisions for the people. Well, these folks are making decisions, not based on what the people want, but what the special interest groups and the PACs. These guys all got to run for election and elections cost money. And they get their money from the special interest groups and political action committees. So these guys are getting money so they can have that job so they can answer to these people. But these guys want payback. And these are the guys that are collecting. Remember that $5,000 number earlier we're spending of taxpayers' money? Well, this is who's paying back these guys. These, these special interest groups, they need their money back. So these politicians, they're knowingly and willingly spending $5,000 so they can pay back their special interest groups and their political action committees. They're basically defrauding the taxpayers when they could be spending $350. Now also remember, I'm talking about frequent flyers here. Keep in mind that when you spend a $350 and you run these 100,000 people through recovery-oriented systems of care run by the recovering community, not only do we increase public safety overnight by getting these consumers off the street because they're volunteering to come get help, but when we reduce recidivism, not so many of them will go reoffend because some of them will actually find recovery. But these guys can't have that because most state agencies, their growth industry, they want to grow their agency. So Department of Corrections and the county jail and the sheriff, they all want more money, more budgets, more, more capacity, more consumption. So they don't think like this. But here's the kicker. If these politicians, if they were corporate America and did what corporate America did, they'd be arrested. They wouldn't be allowed to have that position no more. But for some odd reason in America, you're allowed to be a legal thief, a legal con artist, and the taxpayers, for whatever reason they like it, I haven't quite figured that out yet because they are the ones electing these folks. I just, you know, I don't know, man. What do you think? Am I right or wrong? Anyway, that's probably enough information for today, but I'm going to double back on this sometime in the near future. We'll go over some more uh, facts and figures and fun. In the meantime, stay out of trouble, stay clean, and uh, I'll see you later. Thank you very much.